did I ever shoot? So we just started juggling a few cars to get a Clio Williams out. We want to bring a Clio Williams out of the uh, warehouse to show you. And this Z3 was in the way, so we've pulled this out as well. I'm gonna flip the camera, tell you a little bit about this. So obviously, you, you know it, it's a BMW Z3 M Roadster in Estoril Blue, which is one of the greatest BMW colors of all time. And even in modern BMWs, they still do this color. You can still buy cars in Estoril Blue, but the blue hue is never quite the same on the modern cars as it was on the E36 and on the Z3 M cars. It's just a better color. There's a depth to it that the modern cars don't have. So look at this for an eclectic selection of classics from Wizard. The Z3 M, a Cavalier and a Lexus LS400. When we talk about diversity, diversity is all the rage, but you can't get much more diverse than these three. Followers of Jeff Buys Cars will know that I absolutely love a Z3. I don't need to say this again. I think they're fantastic looking cars. I think the handling is superb and with the right engine, they can be delightful. I like the 1.9 manual, but if you've got a little bit more money and you want something that's a little bit more collectible, why not go for a Z3 M Roadster like this? Wide arches, wide wheels, manual gearbox, 3.2 liter M fettled six cylinder engine. Really lovely looking car with the quad exhaust at the back there and look at the size of the tires it's a huge tire on a really deep dish i know deep dish isn't the right phrase because that's what you call pizza but they are staggered wheels so they're you know much shallower at the front and then deep dish at the back just a just a sort of a thin and crispy at the front and then a deep dish at the back with a whole load of pepperoni under the bonnet should we have a look under the bonnet let's do that look at this beautiful piece of bavarian engineering it just looks lovely that's how an engine should look huge fan of this car uh, will be going up for sale on the website pretty soon i believe it needs to undergo full prep uh, photography and all that sort of stuff this one has just come in we only pulled it out because um the m3 that we were going to talk about sold today the Renault Clio Williams. Uh, Richard is well known for his love of the Renault Clio Williams, has sold a number of them. And this one is rather special because it's very clean and very original. Quite a lovely thing. It has, however, done 100,000 miles, which might put off some of the collectors, but not me, obviously. Can I just take a minute to talk about the aesthetics of this car? Look, it's a beautiful shade of blue. It's the perfect blue, complemented by the perfect shade of gold. I know those are very simple things to talk about, just the color, but any more gold in the gold and it would have overdone it. Any more tropical in the blue and it would have overdone it. It is perfect. And that's one of the many things that made this car such a huge success inside very simple but blue carpets neat little touch to put blue carpets in the clear williams blue gauges blue gear knob and just subtlety it's a very subtle blue seat belts obviously it's a very subtle little hot hatch fantastic handling great revy fun engine in a beautifully designed package you can absolutely see why these have shot up in value what a lovely little car it does not sound, it sounds so good though. Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh jump into a steamy cavalier. Um, is the window open because it's steamy in here? Yeah. Oh, okay then. Um, that might cause us noise problems. We're no longer in a Lexus. <laughs> when was but, the last time you were on the back seat of a Cavalier? Um, I don't think <laughs> I've ever owned, or our family have ever owned a Cavalier. No. No. We had um, Ford Escorts, I think. No, Ford Cortina was the very first car I remember. Yeah. Prior to that, my granddad's car, things, you know, Austin Cambridge and stuff, and yeah. Morris Travellers. But I don't remember our family. I think we yeah. had, um, and then Volvos. But yeah. I never remember a Cavalier. Yeah. Neighbours did and things, or people around you. Yeah. Saw them when you were to school and things. My dad never Chevette's had main... Chevette's, yeah. yeah. That was the same front end, wasn't it? Yeah. My dad had the, the one that came after this. This is a Mark... Mark 1. And the Mark 2... Completely different looking car. Yeah, totally. Front wheel drive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think my dad... This, this went for ages. This went right up till... Which is funny, considering looking at it now, it looks like a 60s car. Yeah, it does. What do you think? Well, the Victor, I think, was the one before this. And yeah. Listen, Vauxhall aficionados are going to stand and correct us. They are, they are. But 
in it. We, we, but let's have a look. We do have one. So this is uh, Richard's book from, what were you telling me earlier? You I got Tell this. the story as to how you got this book. Well, uh, sh show, on, show us the book. It's the British, uh, the automobile, I can't read it backwards, the Observer's Book of Automobiles. Yeah. And when I was, I think I was probably eight or nine, we could probably work this out, but that would not give my age away. But not something I read. But there's a notage in here, or an, a, a noted by me, and it says in really, really bad joined up writing, we drive a Volvo with an exclamation mark. Excellent, so you've marked your place in the book. Well, that probably, <laughs> we must have had a Volvo. And at that point, yeah. it probably would have been a blue 245 estate, PDU 816R. Yeah. Nice. Um, or it could have been oh, a YNC 328M. It would have been an M road, yeah. wouldn't it? Um, 244, green car. Yeah. God, that's, how do I know that? I can't I remember know. what I had for breakfast, but I can remember yep. that. Yeah, all your car number plates from everything going back. I've been mean, eight years old, nine years so old. So you've been thumbing through this book for four decades? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's still to hand now. Amazing. Um, Chevette four-door GL. That's yeah. exactly the same as what we're seeing in. Uh, yeah, but it's just a bigger version of it. So the Chevette was bigger? No, the one we're in is bigger. Oh, the Cavalier was Cavalier bigger. bigger. Yeah, yeah, okay. And have a look. The 2.3 HS. It's a rally car. Crazy, uh, isn't it? You just go and buy one. Yeah. No problem. You can just go and buy a rally car. Uh, there we go. So Cavalier, two litre. Now this one in the book is a GLS. So right. it's been slightly... But look at it. That's it. Yeah. And look at the way it's all presented. Single drive plate clutch. Front independent suspension. Now, if you'd asked me when I was 11, I could have told you all those numbers. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't speak French yeah. or anything like that, but I could tell Brilliant. you every single number that was in here. But yeah, it's just interesting. And the fact that whenever we get a new car, I just have a quick look in here to see if it's in there. Love it. The majority of them are. So, the Cavalier, yes. which is obviously on eBay at the moment. Yeah, it's on eBay at the yeah. moment. Um, it seems to have gone down really well. I mentioned to you earlier, we did a Cars That Don't Exist Anymore on Facebook as yep. a page. It's, oh, I quite like it. It's, it's, it's engaging and doesn't seem to be too many knobheads on there either. Mm -hmm. um, they put a photograph of this, double photograph, front and back. It's got more comments than anything else I've ever done. Yeah. So clearly classic cars are nothing to do with price point. No, nothing. no, I, I genuinely don't think they are. I mean, as I said to you this morning, I walked in your warehouse, you've got an E30 M3 in there. I don't know how many Porsches and it was this one I was most excited about. Yeah. I think like, that's the point. You just don't see them anymore, but you used to. Yeah, well, there used to be a lot of them. I mean, they sold, I think, I look at the numbers. Now, they sold nowhere near as many as a Ford Cortina. Yeah. I think they sold a, less than a half. Yeah. So the total bill numbers, I think, were 250,000 mm. throughout. Cortina did, I think the Ford Cortina did a million. Yeah. Probably a million yeah. numbers. So they were way off, but they were everywhere, weren't they? Yeah. And then once they'd gone out of circulation, they then moved into people who couldn't afford an XR3i. Yeah. They bought this because it had a big, I mean, some of them had two litre motors in them. Yeah, yeah. And then the Mantas, etc. And they weren't, you know, there was nothing wrong with them. And even now, they drive perfectly well. Oh, it's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. And it's like the antidote to modern motoring. So, well, when's the auction end? Four days? Four days, yeah. Where yeah. do you think it will end up? What's I've it no on idea. now? Um, it's, it's just shy of four grand. Okay. I think it'll probably be four grand by the end of the weekend. So it's, it's on and it's no, no reserve. No, it's no reserve. It? So it's, it's, it'll it's go sold. for what it goes for. It's sold, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. But somebody's going to end up with. I imagine somebody wants this who used to have one. Yeah. Their dad had one, their uncle had one, they had one in the family, they remember going on holidays in them. Yeah. I mean, look, we don't even have front headrests. It's just, there's, everything about it is lovely. It is pure automotive simplicity, I think. Absolutely it's... no continuity problems at all on this, on today's video. Hey, what you can do though. Everyone's going to be like, Jeff, no, the quality was so good at the end, could, you need a new phone. You could just do a quick um, comparison. What phone have you got? That is an old, I'll show you, that is the old iPhone XR okay. that I started filming Jeff Buys Cars on. And can you see that hole there? That was, bite. No, I dared my 10 year old to shoot at it with a BB gun because I didn't think he could hit it. He did? Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. First shot. <laughs> that was last summer and I still haven't had it fixed. But this will give you an opportunity to compare. Galaxy S22, which I don't rate, by yeah. the way. Oh, okay. But anyway. You so if, if, you've, if in the comments you have a phone that's better than that or better than the one we're filming on, now let's hear about it. I know what it is, it's called a plus one. Yeah. Chinese brand, no one knows, they're like the Blackberry phones, only nerds have them. Well, I've got a few subscribers now, I'm going to have to get a better phone. Plus one, ask anybody. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, where as did we, we were saying. Where did we get to? Oh yes, the number of people that would have gone on holiday in this. Yeah. On the holidays to um, 
the coast in the UK. Yeah, yeah, proper English holidays. Yeah, they just sort of jumped in this. And they were talking about what, 80s, mid-80s yeah. and 90s, before um, package holidays became, you know, you fly to Spain for zip, yeah. you know, with family of four. And one, there was a crossover point, I think, where it probably became more yeah. expensive. But you'd have got any holidays to New Guinea, or you've gone mm-hmm. to, to Rill or wherever in the country. And you'd have had four kids across the Four back. kids, yeah. packed up to thing, and a dog. Yeah. And this thing would have taken you on your holidays, and yeah. you've gone to places where other people had exactly the same yeah. thing. And that's why it's just, it, this is why it's astonishing that this thing has survived. It's a time capsule of a slice of uh, British culture, isn't it? Really, yeah, in a way. I it's, so, it's yeah. kind of in, in a way to me, it's, like more, it's more than just a car. It's a, it is a, a little bit of a time capsule. Maybe that's the point why it attracts interest as well because it's a, a simple, clearly a simpler time. But yeah. that's another conversation. It is. Um, what I did do though, I looked on, and I must have done this wrong. You do it all the time. I looked on how many left. Oh yeah, zero. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, but there isn't because there's this one. Yeah. So maybe... DVLA uh, registrations go a bit skew if the further back you go. So if you're looking for an old car, it can, yeah. can be difficult but to find. But it said there's one on Sawn and zero. Well, this isn't on Sawn. It's in yeah. trade. So we probably technically it would be on Sawn. So maybe this is the one that's left in this, this year. This is the one. So there you go. So if you're watching this and, and, you know, what's the date today? 20th? Yes. So if you're watching it uh, any time up to about the 24th of January 2023, get yourself a, get yourself a bid in. Um, other stuff that we've looked at today, the Lexus obviously we've collected. Oh, I drove it home, I think fantastic. it's fantastic. Yeah, I do too. But um, did you see the button marked snow? No. Ah, that's why I managed to come off there without making any Oh, fuss. right, okay. It's, it's got traction control for snow, so I pushed that button and it came off a lot easier, but it wasn't anywhere near as much fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I need to drive the, the, the Lexus, but that's going to be, it'll go through the detailing process. I'll yeah. detail it, Dan will clean that, yeah. and it will look immaculate, because yeah. the, they were talking about this before, weren't we, the, the quality of the product mm means that when you come to clean them now, yeah. it will look like it did yeah, yeah, 20 years ago, yeah. rather than um, an inferior product that you'll need to reconalize or yeah. other other sort of um, methods to fix them. It will yeah. look, and it'll come up brand new. It's been looked after. So I'm interested to drive that. Um, what else is in stock then? So Cavalier ends in a couple of days. That's Z3, going up on the website. Z3M. Z3 yeah. M, uh, convertible. That came in yesterday, so that's going to be up for sale in the next couple of days. We didn't see the camper van as well, the Westphalia. No, we didn't. We can just see it in the back there. We'll T25 the Westphalia. Um, a rare thing. And if you're thinking about a camper van, some people want split screens or bay windows. Mm-hmm. They're great, but they do 50 miles an hour. They're not and that livable as a no, driving thing. That's the first one. Double glazing. Um, it has underslung... Um, this is factory fitted as well, mm. Westphalia in Germany, which is a town by the way, um, and they do a factory conversion. So the LPG is under the thing, you've got running water, bunk, two beds, four, sleeps four, it'll do 70 miles an hour all day and it'll do 50 mpg. So is that, which engine is that then? It's a 1600 diesel, turbo. Okay, got you, cool. That rather makes, than, that makes perfect sense. Rather then. than a petrol, yeah. I mean, it's Absolutely. noisy, it's old, but it's perfectly serviceable and if you're looking for something that when you turn up you look cool in that well, yeah, you're, you're going to look cool as far as way is concerned it's you're a cool look... comfortable thing and yeah. with the price of camper vans at the moment yeah, I, don't, yeah, so I don't think it's you can buy yourself um, later ones like a T5 or a T6 they're 35 40 grand now the rest and yeah. you know I don't know what they're going to do to price wise because there's lots of them but that's a factory conversion mm. and so, I think it's probably a good place to park some money if you like camper vans if not it's not for you yeah Left-hand drive as well, so it's a German one, which means that, you know, you're going to Europe and it makes perfect sense. Other than that, what else was there? Well, there was um, the M3, but it sold yeah, whilst, we, sold were whilst we were here. Yeah. Well, obviously, I was, I was party to that. No, um, no, pretend that <laughs> you're so popular that whilst we were filming, someone just turned up and said, hey, I'd like that car. They left the money on the side, yeah. Left the money on the side. I'll sort of how it so, Yeah, the M3 sold, which yeah. is good. Um, Honda Insight? I think that might be going to mention before, it could be going to Holland. The yeah. guy's just looking at the import duty, and it doesn't seem crazy, despite the fact that Brexit, etc. Um, it's not enormous, because it's an old car, and it, it's the VAT is based on the, the value. Right, okay. So, and he seems to accept that. So we're just in the final throes of that. But if that stays, I'm happy, because we could run around in it in the, in the summer. And we yeah. can do a video on it as well. Um, Clio? Not for sale. Uh, that doesn't exist, you've not seen that. Yeah, no, I, I brought that out so you could see it. I actually didn't see a Clio Williams here today. No, it is. Um, no, that's mine, and it's, it's stayed for a while. We also need to get the El Camino out. Yes, we do. Do yeah. something with that. Yeah. The Bill Blast. Nobody's put the hand up for the Bill Blast yet. Mm, they need to. Yeah. The Bill I Blast think, is cool. I don't think it's... Tell you what, it's looking a lot better since you've cleaned it, because yeah. I think you'd not long had it when I was here last we time. We picked it up and drove it, didn't we? It was yeah. squeaky windscreen wipers and you know one of other things. We put new plugs, new leads. Um, it drives like a different car. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's a lovely place to be. The inside's been cleaned. But it's not really January, I'm sure, the time that people well, are buying. Yeah. You know, big American cars. The car scene starts in, what, end of March, yeah. April time, doesn't it, at the earliest. So 
you know, I'm happy to keep it there. It's a big old thing, though. So it's a big old thing. I won't miss it in terms of size, but I'll miss it because it's a cool thing to sort of uh, to have around. But other than that, stock's coming through. But anyway, if you've got anything you want to sell, let us know. So I'm looking at the moment. Um, Alpha GTV 6. Mm. I'm going to see that tomorrow. So okay. we'll see whether or not that comes to anything. I think the guy wants a bit too much money for it. Yeah. But... I don't know, we'll see. We might end up having a look at a car and going back to see it in a month's time when you tend not sold it privately. Who well, knows? These things seem to happen. Like I am seeing cars, you know, going onto marketplace and then sitting there, but then stocks moving, as you know as well. So yeah. So January seems to be there's no dim and gloom. No. Um, people seem to be still confident in buying classic cars and modern classic cars. So we'll keep buying them. Good. All right. Well, you keep buying them, and I'll keep coming for trying. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Wicked.